So we're gonna help you choose focal length or angle of view for your surveillance camera. So we have a camera, we put a, a camera right here, and you'll notice that this line over here shows us how wide we're seeing. And you'll see we have a Google Maps integration that shows what it looks like. Up here, you'll notice that it says 2.6 millimeters and 86 degree angle of view. So when you're choosing surveillance cameras, you wanna know how wide or what angle of view or focal length to choose. I'm gonna move this in now, and you'll notice that the focal length has gone up and the angle of view has gone down, and that's how it works. They're inversely are related. So you can then make a decision, right, okay, now you only have a 60 degree angle of view. Let's drag it out. Now we have a 97 degree angle of view. Let's drag it out further. Now we have a 120 degree angle of view. And you can do this uh, at any spot you want. So let's say you live in uh, Kansas City. Uh, we can go into Kansas City, and if you live, say, here, uh, add a camera there, and then we can do another experiment. So if this is your block, for instance, you could say, okay, let's take a look at a narrower. So, okay, this is what it looks like at 62 degrees. Um, especially when you're going outdoors, you'll notice that you generally need fairly large angle of views, which means relatively higher focal lengths. Some other things to keep in mind. The focal length is generally how manufacturers specify, but it depends on the image or size. If you're not an expert in surveillance cameras, don't worry about this, but let's show you what we mean. Right now, it's a 5.9 millimeter focal length. If we switch from a third inch imager to a one quarter inch imager, you'll notice that the actually the angle of view has become even narrower. So there is an impact on that. One thing that's really helpful is that you can just select cameras from IPVM. So for instance, you're choosing an Axis, say, M3004, it already knows exactly what its angle of view is and its focal length. So we'll select this camera, and now you'll see for this intersection, it's gonna tell you that it's 80 degrees and 2.8 millimeter. And again, you can't change it because this camera is a fixed lens camera. Um, you could pick other cameras. I mean, we have lots of lots of cameras. I'll just sort of randomly pick one from Samsung, for instance, and you'll see here, okay, this Samsung camera um, is a verifocal camera. So we'll go and we'll change it to that. And here you see you can actually adjust the angle of view, um, but it's only within the range of what the camera supports. So that's another way to go about doing that. Uh, other things that we could potentially do, we could add different cameras. And again, you could go to where you're at. So if you are in London, um, you could go to the United Kingdom and you could add a camera wherever you are and you could repeat the same process to get a better feel of, of where you're at. Um, if you're in an area, for instance, where there isn't street views, let's see, we'll add a camera here, um, you can also select scenes. So let's say you're planning to do a camera um, in a lobby. Now you can choose here and get a little bit of a better understanding of the uh, field of view. So you'll see here again, this is 93 degrees, which is 1.7 millimeters focal length. And you could change this, you know, you can say, hmm, maybe I want a focal length of 10 millimeters. Okay, 10 millimeters with a quarter inch imager, or I'll change it to a third inch imager. Now we're going to 26 degree focal length. And if you wanted to choose, you know, even 100, you'll see now you're down to 2.75, right? So that's very, very narrow. Uh, if we went back over here and say let it only to three millimeter focal length, now you see the field of view or the angle of view is 77 degrees, so much larger. Uh, you can also adjust these things if you wanna get a feel. There are many scenes here, like you, for instance, can try a hallway. So you can see like, what does a hallway look like at a 50 degree angle of view? versus 110 degree angle of view. And you do the same thing with focal length, right? Let's go and choose an eight millimeter focal length. Um, you could do the same thing with the camera. Let's choose, for instance, a Panasonic camera. Let's see over here, okay, this is a cube camera, 85 degrees this is exactly what this Panasonic, in terms of the width uh, of field of view, is going to deliver for you. So these are some of the fundamental points when you're trying to compare uh, field of view and focal length. One last thing that's important, you'll notice that when you change, and let me go back to manual mode, when you change, and I'll zoom in a little bit more so we're in this park in London right now, uh, and let's go and let's use basically a parking lot uh, scene. You'll notice that as you 
pixel per foot, the pixel density or the projected image quality is going to change when you change focal length. So we're at 2.6 millimeters right now and 85 degrees, which is a fairly wide angle of view. If you make it a more narrow angle of view, for instance, increasing the focal length from 2.6 to say 6.2, you're gonna notice down here your pixels per foot and the image quality is gonna look a lot better. So I'm gonna change this from 2.6 now to 6.2. You'll notice, right, the image quality has increased significantly. Like we, for instance, we could go to, instead of 6.2, we could do 12.4, and boom, wow, the image quality is much uh, greater. However, you notice right now is that it's a much narrower triangle or cone, where before, when we were at 2.6 when we started this, it was much, much wider. So those are some of the important trade-offs you need to keep in mind when you're looking at field of view, angle view, and also, finally, pixel density. Thank you.